Ben Shapiro was pressed to admit that being gay was a sin. Is it a sin to be gay? And his answer might surprise you. But I have a video of someone's testimony of them who used to be transgender and now they are living for Jesus. So let's get right into the video. But you think it's a sin to have same-sex marriage? I mean, I'm, I'm confused. Are you asking me as a religious Jew what I think about biblically? I'm just here? asking, is it a sin to be gay? Is it a sin to be gay? I mean, we, are, how long do we have here? Two minutes? I mean, if, if, the, if the basic idea is that sexual orientation is up for government regulation, I'm not in favor of the government regulating the private consenting sexual activity of adults. That is a different thing, once again, from whether the government ought to engage in actual benefits for particular sexual arrangements that adults make. But again, just you, you to me, is it a sin or not? From a religious Jewish perspective, orientation is not a sin, but activity is. That's also the same perspective of most major religions, so far as I'm aware. Okay. Saying, like, you might be attracted to the same sex, but if acting out on it is actually what is the sin. So, guys, I thought that was really interesting how they asked him directly whether or not it's a sin. He didn't outright say it's a sin or not. I mean, he, he's a Jew, so he's professing, like, to believe in the Old Testament. So I have a video here that will really help you if you maybe struggle with this or, or even just explaining that God can deliver people from the homosexuality life. Hi guys, my name is Ariana Armour. The biggest part of my story is that I was in the LGBT community for 16 years. And that's the biggest thing that people know me by, transgender to transformed, and there's a lot that goes into it. Um, so I think the first thing I'd, I'd start out with is that I'm adopted. I grew up um, in a religious household, so it was more, you know, you go to church every Sunday and, you know, you listen to the pastor speak, but there's no, there was no feeling. There was no presence of the Lord there. I knew of Jesus, but I didn't have my own relationship with him, if that makes sense. Um, so that's how I grew up in my, you know, relationship with God was, you know, I know you're there, but I don't really know who you are. And I was four years old when I started dealing with same-sex attraction and it happened in Sunday school. I remember it just like yesterday. I was four years old. Um, I was sitting there in Sunday school and this girl walked in and I remember, wow, this is the most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my life. And instantly, instantly, I slumped down in my chair, like sank in my seat and I was ashamed that I was a girl. Keep in mind, nobody had ever talked, talked to me about attraction. Nobody had ever talked to me about sex or sexuality or anything like that. But in that moment, I knew she's not gonna like me because I'm a girl. Around when I was seven years old, I came out officially as a lesbian. I was a stud, which means I was a girl who dressed like a man and behaved more man. Wow, at seven, she came out already? And at four, how do you even know you like someone at four? I don't even remember that, but that's insane. And all those things. Um, I came out at school and I came out to my parents. As I grew up, I started dealing with, you know, aside from, you know, the gender identity and, and sexuality, I started dealing with a lot of anger and rage and violence because I was so hurt deep down. But I was the type of person that if I was hurt, I just bottle it in because anytime I had expressed how I was feeling, whether it was about my identity or about God or just anything at all, it was shut down. I ended up in a lot of mental hospitals on a lot of medications for things that I didn't even have. But because people were scared of me and they didn't know what to do to help and they didn't know what they could do, they decided to put me in a lot of uh, mental hospitals, you know, psych wards, medicines, counseling, psychiatrists, all of it. I had, I've been in and out of mental hospitals at least more than 10 times in my life. So that also played into me pushing God away because I didn't understand why on earth a loving God would give me all these mental issues and allow me to struggle and suffer with these feelings and desires and these thoughts that I didn't ask for. And when I sought help, it became worse. So it ended up making me resent God more. Once I had turned 18, I started transitioning and I started taking synthetic testosterone um, and I was ecstatic. I remember as soon as I took the hormones, I remember telling everybody on social media, I'm finally free. This is finally the person that, you know, I'm finally becoming the person that I was always meant to be. And I remember posting it everywhere. Guys, I'm almost there. I was planning to have breast removal surgery um, at the time, I was in a relationship and I had been with that person for six years and I believed that this was my wife. Genuinely believed it. After I started transitioning, I, I had been taking testosterone for two years. 
And after I started transitioning. Wow, that's her. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. And I have something that I think will tie into this, but keep watching. I uh, just remember feeling, you know, I'm still depressed, I'm still suicidal, I'm still struggling. Nothing really changed about my life except for my body, you know? You know, transit becoming a man didn't really help me. It just changed how I, how I looked. And so I started looking for answers. I was like, okay, this isn't helping. This is not what I thought it was gonna be. I need something because something in my soul is missing. There's still something missing in my life. So ended up homeless and I was working out at the gym at the time and this girl had just, she asked me to go to church with her. And keep in mind, she worked there. And she asked me to go to church with her and I remember saying, no, you know, God doesn't want somebody like me in the church. I don't belong there. I didn't tell her that I was trans. And at the time, you, you couldn't tell. I passed very well as a male. Um, but long story short, I ended up going that day and I encountered God for the first time ever. I received so much and I, I felt the love of God for the first time in my life. That was November 20th of 2019. So after I met Jesus that day, I pursued him for an entire year. I was reading my word, I was praying, I was still transgender during this time. And a year later, I was living with my ex at the time, um, bought the ring, you know, about to start my life with this person. And I'm in the prayer closet and I'm like, God, why am I not seeing breakthrough in my life? I'm doing everything you asked me to do. And all of a sudden God speaks to me and gives me a vision. And he says, in, in this vision, there was a man and a woman on one side. And then on the other side, there was a man and a man and a woman and a woman. The man and the woman had babies. It was like glowing really bright. And it was like generations went down the line. And then on the other side, with the man and the man and the woman and the woman, there was a red line under their feet. And it was black because you, you can't recreate life that way. So I'm staring at this like vapor, like this vision in front of my face and God speaks to me and he says, I made man and woman so you could recreate and share the good news of my son, Jesus Christ. And, and he says, if the devil can convince somebody, a little boy or a little girl, a man or a woman, that they are gay, lesbian or trans, he said, not only is the devil going against my will because the devil's will is always against God's will, but the devil is wiping out entire family bloodlines and generations of people that I intended to be born will not exist for my glory. So I just remember feeling, wow, I've been really selfish my whole life. Everything in my life was based on my feelings. Oh, I feel like I'm a lesbian. I feel like I'm trans. I feel like God hates me and, and I was wrong. God loved me the entire time. I just had no idea about it because unfortunately his people didn't do a good job at telling me and showing me that. So I'm just sitting there and I'm crying and God wraps this fiery blanket around me and he says, I love you no matter what you choose, but you have to choose today. And I chose him. I was terrified to choose him because I had been one way my entire life. That's all I've ever known. Um, the next day I went to church and I got set free of the demonic spirit of Jezebel. And I didn't know anything about demons. I didn't know there was a spirit behind homosexuality. I didn't know there was demons behind um, false identities, but there was. And I know now that James Harley, which was the name that I went by, James was a false identity. That was never who I was, but the devil stole my identity from a very young age. And that's why I believed I was born that way because I was four and I didn't know better. So I can honestly sit here and tell you now, the desire to be with a woman is gone. The desire to be a man is gone. Where I once desired to be a man, I desire to have a man. Where I once desired to be a husband, I desire a husband. And that's not something I ever thought would ever happen to me in my life. But once I allowed God to change everything and I put myself in a position to say, you know what, I'm gonna put myself aside, I'm gonna put me away and everything I want, I'm gonna put it over here to fulfill your will, not mine. That's when my life totally changed. And now I spend most of my time um, helping people in the LGBT. If you want help, if you're seeking Jesus, I'm here for you. Wow, that is so amazing. Shout out to her for her testimony. I know it's going to make such a difference. And the thing that I really notice is like, no matter what you're doing, no matter if you're gay, lesbian, or straight, we all search for things that will truly make us happy. We all search for things of this in this world that is going to finally fill the void of our depression and anxiety and 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 self selfishness but it none of it fills us none of it none of it satisfies us at all but there's just one thing and that's jesus jesus truly satisfies us because that's why we are created we are created to have a relationship with Jesus. We are created to have a relationship with the Father, and through Jesus we can do that. And that's why she was finally 
fulfilled in Jesus. So that's why she's finally got peace. She was finally set free in the name of Jesus. And Jesus can do that in your life. He can set you free. You don't have to keep on living the way that you're living now. You can turn to Jesus and he can make you into a new creation. He can transform your life and make you into the person that you were created to be. So thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below your thoughts, whatever that may be. I love to hear them. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. And I think you also might like this video here. Peace.